Welcome into Sports Memos Betting Podcast Friday edition. It's February 21st, but we're breaking down the Saturday card in the NHL. The Look Ahead Podcast here with Andrew McGinnis, our NHL expert north of the border. Welcome into the pod. How are you doing today, McGinnis? Andrew, doing really good. Uh, looking forward to a great weekend. I uh, love previewing these Saturday cards. And uh, of course, we know we got uh, Wilder Fury Saturday night. So if you're a sports fan, uh, you're ready to go for a great weekend. How are you doing? Yeah. You're right, man. It's it's uh, I'm doing good. Just yesterday I was at uh, Radio Row or whatever they're calling it at the MGM. It was a lot of fun, man. A lot going on. I saw both fighters in person. Uh, two big dudes, man. I didn't realize I, ex- how big they are in person as well. So it's going to be a fun fight tomorrow night. We also got the uh, Panthers in Vegas Golden Knights. We'll be breaking down a little bit here. Nightcap on Saturday night. That's happening here in Vegas as well. But a little bit more towards the top of the card here, McGinnis. we got 35-36 Buffalo at Pittsburgh we're going to be breaking down first. And uh, I'll tell you, probably the best guy out there in the industry to be breaking this down, man. Nine and two, 5% plays, seven straight winners. You got one going on Saturday. So, guys, check it out at sportsmemo.com. Andrew McGinnis is up 42% ROI. That's bankroll increase betting every play in the NHL. He's seeing it well on the ice, making some money out there. So, check him out, sportsmemo.com. Dot com. We got game number 3536 here up first. Daytime faceoff. Buffalo, Pittsburgh. Looks like Pittsburgh heavy home favorites here, McGinnis. Minus 230 is what we're seeing now. Total of six on this one. You interested in getting involved with Buffalo and Pittsburgh? Yeah, it's a very early start here, Drew. 1 p.m. Eastern puck drop. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins and Buffalo Sabres, two teams definitely at different ends of the standings here, but it brings a different uh, element here with this Pittsburgh team this time around. They just played two straight games against the same team, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, and uh, it was two completely different games. I mean, the game they played in Pittsburgh, they won 5-2, and they went to Toronto for that home-and-home home second half of it, lost 4 nothing. So I'm expecting a bounce-back performance out of this Pittsburgh Penguins team after getting shut out. I mean, it was kind of one thing you expect after a great game against the same team. They go and play them again, and of course the other team, Toronto, bounced back. But I expect Pittsburgh to get going here and, and bounce back in a big way. Uh, I expect some goals in this one. We're seeing a total here of six. I'm already locked and loaded with the first period over one and a half, but I do like the full game over six as well. I think this one should be a six and a half goal total here. We've got a Buffalo team just scoring in bunches with everybody that they're playing. It could be you know, a, a lower-skilled team, a higher-skilled team in the standings, no matter who it is. They're going over the posted total, coming fresh off a 7-4 to four loss uh, against the Ottawa Senators. That's a high-scoring game, Drew, uh, mm-hmm. and that's back on February 18th. So uh, I'm on the first period over, uh, but I'm more importantly on the full game over 6. Uh, I like this play a lot here. And again, it's a bounce-back spot for a Pittsburgh team. Uh, and I, I, they have really trended over uh, following a game where they've scored two or less goals. An angle I've bet on quite a bit here. Uh, with my clients uh, all the time, all year, uh, with a team like Pittsburgh scoring two or less goals in their prior ga- previous game uh, to get right back in the saddle and light the lamp here uh, tomorrow to uh, start things off in the NHL card, card 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, we got some some early starts, and then we're going to be breaking down some night games and a nightcap here. Next game up, we actually uh, shout out on Twitter to Tony Zuko with a question on this game. I think... Can you preview the Canes versus the Leafs? Canes will be on a back-to-back after facing the Rangers Friday night. I think they look past the Rangers and lose tonight for revenge on the Leafs. A weird high-scoring day game last time they met on December 23rd. So kind of to Tony's point here, he's he's leading into game number 37-38, the rotation number on the Saturday NHL card here. Carolina at Toronto. Looks like uh, Toronto minus 140 home favorites north of the border here. Six in the hook being the total. So uh, what Tony's asking here, McGinnis, you mind touching on that and uh, your overall view of Carolina versus Toronto? Definitely. And, uh, you know, Drew, it definitely was a crazy game, man. It was back on December 23rd. It was the last game for both these teams uh, before their uh, Christmas break started. And the game started off 3 nothing for Carolina. Uh, that game ended 8-6. to 8 to 6 in a hockey game, professional hockey game. Uh, that was quite the messy game. And it was actually, uh, they were calling it Kids Day at the Toronto game. So uh, the kids were definitely uh, in for a pretty exciting game with lots of goals. So, um, you know, it's definitely one of those things when you look back on it, I think both these teams and the media will be all over it talking about the previous game. 
but this Toronto team, they're coming into this one after, like I said, just you know, over my last recap of the last breakdown, beating the Pittsburgh Penguins 4 nothing. I mean, this is a team that after they lost 5-2 to Pittsburgh and their previous game before that lost 5-2 to Buffalo, their whole coaching staff said, and their leaders on their team said, you have to look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves what kind of team we want to be uh, for the second half. It was really one of those uh, cliche moments, Drew, uh, where they want to say, you know, what kind of team do we want to be moving forwards? Uh, and they bounced back in a big way. Not only am I impressed by the win, but it's the fact that they they had a great defensive game. They shut out the Penguins for nothing. That's what it really impressed me the most. I want to make that very clear. I don't care about the four goals. The Leafs do that all the time. It was the defensive performance they put forward. So we're getting, in my opinion, Drew, a very generous price here at around minus 140 at most shops for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think that brings lots of value to uh, and that question, again, saying that, you know, they think the Carolinas going to kind of look ahead to this game against Toronto. The fact is, the game against New York uh, play, being played on Friday night is not going to be easy. Uh, New York pretty much, you know, makes everybody play a really tough physical game, a full 60, a very tiring game. Uh, the fatigue factor will certainly be there for Carolina heading into Saturday. I love Toronto at this price. Uh, I think it'll get bet up before puck drops. So I think it's a good uh, opportunity uh, when you're watching this podcast to, uh, ho- you know, log into your betting site and uh, grab the Bay police while you can. He's Andrew McGinnis on Twitter at McGinnis picks. He's got his 5% NHL situational best bet up at sports memo.com. That's the highest rating you can have at sports memo in terms of confidence of the play 5% NHL situational best bet going on Saturday. Check it out guys. Sports memo.com. McGinnis has hit seven straight, 5% winners. He's up 42% ROI. That's return on investment over the whole course of the NHL season. So he's he's uh, making some money. Check it out, sportsmemo.com. Also, one-time discount here for the rest of his NHL season, sportsmemo.com. We'll keep it at active for 48 hours. We got NHL299 is the coupon code. That's NHL299 coupon code for almost $400 off the rest of his NHL season. Get you all the way throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs through Game 7, if that happens. No extra charges later. NHL 299 at checkout for his NHL full season package. That's every play he releases in the NHL for the rest of the season. Uh, McGinnis, next game up here, we got um, 8 p.m. Eastern, excuse me. Game number 45-46, Columbus at Nashville. Looks like the Preds, minus 165 favorites at home. Five in the hook being the total. What are you thinking for game number three on the slate? Uh, Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking, Drew. I'm telling you, this should not be a a five-and-a-half total. And pretty much every single Columbus Blue Jackets game is going to be a a five-and-a-half. It's just the way that it is with the the team that's been so defensive for the past two, three years. Seen some pretty great goaltending, but... With the injuries, the way they've built up, to me, injuries means bet over, uh, especially when Seth Jones went out. I mean, not often can one player going out really dictate the change of a total, but I really feel like when Seth Jones went out for injury, it really changed the pace of the game. Uh, And John Tortorella, the head coach for Columbus, realized, hey, we're in a tough spot right now. We're getting scored on a couple times a game. That means we have to step up our pace of play as well. He didn't really take that approach where he said, you know, play better defensively. He said, no, we had to match the other team with their intensity on offense. So uh, over the past, I'd say, four or five games, we've seen some higher scoring games. We've seen a lot faster of a pace with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, A 4-3 game against Philly, uh, 4-3 game against New Jersey, 4-3 game against Buffalo. I could really go on and on here, Drew, but, you know, Columbus is cashing these over tickets and we're seeing a constant five and a half with them uh, as their total. Nashville will be coming off a a game from Friday night. They're playing the second half of a back to back here. Uh, They've been going over the total as well. More importantly, they've been scoring goals and uh, been looking pretty good against subpar teams. So I think uh, Columbus could get exploited here by Nashville. They've uh, kind of been picking it up a little bit. And again, as a five and a half goal total, I don't think this number is where it should be. So that's why I'm on the over here. All right, McGinnis, we're going to be breaking down one more nightcap here. Panthers versus the Golden Knights here in Las Vegas. Guys, coupon code NHL299 gets you the rest of McGinnis's NHL season. Almost 40, almost 48 hours uh, away from cancelization of that 
coupon code there in terms of uh, it will only last for 48 hours. Sportsmemo.com. NHL 299 coupon code for the rest of the season. We got last game up here, McGinnis. But first, I have a question in terms of you talked about betting totals and it making you look towards uh, towards the over. Um, injuries a lot of times in other sports, you know, especially more offensive minded players going out, make me look towards the under what, what exactly makes you look towards the over in terms of, uh, that, the, the, the player that, that you were talking about being injured. Uh, more so I, I should have corrected myself and I'm happy you asked more so defensive players. He's a key play. He's either a, a top, top two or top three defenseman on the Columbus blue Jackets. So, when a guy that's usually logging around 21 minutes a game is absent, uh, it's hard for them to find someone to kind of uh, mark those exact same minutes and be as efficient as that one guy was. But uh, we saw it with uh, Connor McDavid, you know, known to be one of the best players in the league right now. When he went down with injury, the following game, many people thought that we'd see a low-scoring game because of the lack of scoring. However, the team kind of rallied around that injury and picked up their scoring uh, and a lot of times I think that when you juggle lines, when coaches mix things up, players are motivated to play well with their new line. So, you know, I get it. You look at football, especially if a star receiver goes out, you wonder, OK, who's going to take uh, his place and, you know, catch those same amount of passes uh, in the NHL. I feel like, you know, if I ever see a number one defensive pairing go down, number one or two, I'm looking to either fade that team or bet over uh, with that team because maybe their offense is still looking pretty good, uh, but their defense is, is not going to be the same. Interesting. And, and just off the top of my head here, so a defensive player going down, one of the star defensive players, and then that backup coming in, do you think just off the top of your head, and granted there's going to be situations where it's different, there's more of a drop-off on the defensive side than, say, that same situation happening with uh, – you know, two forwards, like more offensive minded players from top to bottom. Where do you think that there's more of a drop off or do you think that there's no correlation there? Definitely on defense. Uh, okay. There's 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 lists and lists of players that could step up I mean, and, and, you know, make a name for themselves on offense. But the fact is, usually there's three there, there's three pairings. So six defensemen in a game. But the fact of the matter is there's usually about three or four of them that the log the majority of the time. However, you know, there's four lines of forwards for, for NHL. So having one or two guys out, there's usually one or two guys that can take that guy's, you know, spot, unless mm -hmm. it is, you know, the top five player in the world. I mean, if Alexander Ovechkin gets down with an injury tomorrow, it's going to hurt the Washington Capitals. No, no, there's no, there's no uh, hiding that. But I think if a, if a mediocre second or third line player went down for the Detroit Red Wings tomorrow, uh, a very, very poor hockey team, they'd be able to fill that spot, no problem, Drew. I like that question a lot because it makes a lot of sense, you know, because, you know, a forward spot, I believe, is a lot easier to cover up than a, than a defensive position. Okay. Well, we got uh, Florida versus Vegas, then a best bet from McGinnis. Uh, another question, too, before we shut this down. So, uh, McGinnis, it, actually, did you see last Saturday where um, it, it was the Vegas Golden Knights game and – Two guys fought even right at the, the the puck drop. Did you see that? Oh yeah, that was Reeves. Reeves fought. Yeah, uh, uh, Martinson, I think it was. Mar yeah, or no, man. Brinson. Yeah, that was crazy. That they that's called squaring up. That's old fashioned <laughs> hockey right there. I love it. Dude, I, I love watching that man. And Adam Hill, a, a friend of mine here, he, he works for the Las Vegas Review Journal. He talked to him Reeves right after the game and. The, the reason that they fought, I guess they were talking to each other right before. He's like, hey, let's fight. And he's like, oh, I want to get some. I want to go ring somebody first and then we'll fight later. And he, he the other guy, the Martinson guy was like, oh, well, Furry, Furry's here. That You know, the boxer that's fighting this Saturday night. And he's like, all right, that's good enough. And then that's what made him square up right at the right. At the, did you hear that? No, no, I didn't hear that. It's hilarious. Yeah, man, I thought that that was awesome, man. Hockey's great. That kind of stuff is is wild, man. Not not like you can find it in any other sports. So uh, good stuff there. And heck, we might see it again. The Florida Panthers versus the Vegas Golden Knights here. Golden Knights minus 185 favorites as we're talking right now, guys. This is uh, Friday afternoon. Looking at the Saturday NHL card. Six in the hook being the total here. 10 o'clock Eastern puck drop here. So the nightcap. We got the Panthers and Vegas Golden Knights, uh, McGinnis. My two teams here, being from Florida, now living in Vegas. But I uh, just wanted to throw it over to you. If I do go to the game, man, I got to bet it. What would you What would you lean me towards here? And the cool thing about the fighting, Drew, is that 
uh, one thing that's very respectable, they call it the code. Uh, it's like uh, it's like the whole Fight Club thing. The first rule of Fight Club, you don't talk about Fight Club, but the code is like just only the only the fighters know. But like pretty much, it's like a respect. It's like it's if you if you're you know out there, Drew, you got called up from the minors. You go up to the fighter on the other team and say, "Hey, man, like give me this one. I need it. You know, I need to do this for my team." And the other fighter will say, "Sure, all right, whatever." Two minutes later, they're punching each other in the head. And then they're tapping each other on the back and saying, hey, I appreciate it. Like, thanks. It's such a respect. between. Like, a lot of people say the nicest people in the league are the tough guys in the NHL. You know, the, the, the least, like, douchey people in the league are the ones that are actually the tough guys and the fighters in comparison to, like, the all-stars and stuff like that. So I've heard that. And you've seen, like, different documentaries about it all the time. So I think that's kind of funny because, you know, the, the guys have seen the most tough and scary are the ones that are the, almost the most, like, kind-hearted, it seems like. Absolutely. But, McGinnis, I, I see what you're saying. There's almost, like, a respect there because you'll see it all the time. And that fight we're talking about right at the puck drop last week, right when they were done fighting, there was, like, no more fighting. They just kind of both skated off. And it, yeah. they were probably, like, friends after that. It's almost like in the UFC, that's that stuff, like, really surprises me as well in terms of, the sportsmanship right when the bell rings it's like okay the, the the fight is over and like nobody really takes it very rarely you know is there a situation where it like gets out of hand and and you can see that in in the nhl as well man that's awesome that guys you know especially coming up from the minors what just wanting to to, to make a name for themselves fighting the other fighter on the other team yeah like there's been uh different like uh books that were written about that whole thing or like articles where it's like the Sometimes, like, these guys, like, the anxiety they'd get in their hotel room the night before or different things like that, like, they know that that's their job. Like, they they do their research. Like, before they're playing a game, they look at, like, okay, like, this is a, there's a chance this guy, I'm probably going to have to fight him, or maybe I'll ask this guy to impress the coach. Because when it comes down to it, that's what their their role is, you know. And this the, the, the real way that the NHL has been changing, they're trying to eliminate fighting. But the thing is, there's a guy, uh, his name's Tom Wilson on the Washington Capitals. He plays on their first or second line sometimes. So if you can find a guy that's willing to fight and a really tough guy, but he can also play the game and score, then then that's just your perfect guy. Because they don't you, they don't want to have a guy that's like just completely useless out there and can only just drop the gloves. If you can do both and, you know, at least like go up and down the ice and, uh, you know, make some plays and fight, then that's the perfect guy. But like you said, it's just like UFC. Like they, they do it because they know they have to. And then once the fight's over, like I've listened to uh, mic'd up YouTube videos where it's literally a guy saying, "All right, man, like do this for me." Like they're at the face off. He's like, "All right, let's give me the fight. Like I need it for my team." And then during the fight, he's saying, uh, "Which shoulder? Like which is your which is your sore shoulder? I won't hit it." Like it's hilarious. It's almost <laughs> like it's you know it's like I need this fight, but I'm not gonna try and kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, to, to the game though. To the game, it, it'd be very easy. To, to bet the over in this game. every If you're a stats or a trends better, uh, you like the over. I mean, Florida is... They, they, they acquired Bobrovsky in the offseason. They picked him up as their goaltender. They thought that everything was going to change. They were going to be a better defensive team and a better team goaltending-wise. That hasn't really helped at all. The total's gone over in four of their last six games, nine of their last 11 versus the Western Conference. Uh, and same thing with Vegas, but that just goes back to their hectic schedule. But you and I mentioned it the last time we spoke. Uh, will they get their act together back at home for a mini homestand? They have. They've now won four straight games, uh, and I feel like they'll come out on top here again tonight. Um, I'm looking at a, a, a Vegas puck line bet here, Drew. Um, right now we're seeing at a plus price in the first period over is at a two right now at around plus 120. I would recommend giving that out. We have seen... Not, I don't think we've seen any slow starts to any Vegas games, whether it's a fight, whether it's a scoring chance, anything. Uh, this game will be high scoring, and I think Vegas will come out on top. Uh, Florida needs to get home and, and you know play some bottom feeder teams because right now they've been playing quite a few teams that are uh, pretty talented and have a lot of scoring capability, um, and they're not, not faring well. Meanwhile, Vegas just came off of a big, big win against the Tampa Bay Lightning at home where they won 5-3, so... They're definitely feeling confident, feeling motivated, and feeling pretty good about themselves. Okay, so uh, in in terms of if you had a free roll on this, it would be Vegas uh, puck line. Yeah. Okay. All right, good stuff, McGinnis. We got best bet coming up, guys. Remember the coupon code NHL299 at checkout, sportsmemo.com. Rest of Andrew McGinnis's NHL season all the way throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs. Almost $400 off there. 
Guys, it uh, will be active for the next 48 hours. NHL 299 at checkout. He's got his 5% best bet up there, situational spot. He's 9-2 and two in his 5% plays this season, and he's hit seven straight. Yes, you heard that right, seven straight winners in his 5% plays. He's got one going Saturday night, plus 42% return on investment every play across the whole NHL season so far. So, uh, McGinnis, I know you got your 5% play up for Saturday, but uh, best bet for the podcast on the Saturday card, man. Where are we going? We're going to, unfortunately, go with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I say unfortunately because I hate the Leafs as a Montreal Canadiens fan, but I think it's a great spot here for them at a pretty good price of minus 140. Uh, Maple Leafs versus the Carolina Hurricanes get the job done here, Drew. All right, I'm seeing uh, them low watermark here, minus 135. So Toronto okay. minus 135 is what you want to go with, best bet for the podcast? Yes, All right, Maple Leafs. Toronto minus 135. I'm also on your 5% situation. I got two bets going on Saturday. If I go to the Vegas game, I'm going to have three NHL bets going. That's the most I've ever bet <laughs> in my life on an NHL card, McGinnis. So uh, hopefully, hopefully it goes well on Saturday, man. Is there anything else you wanted to throw out there before we shut this down? We're good to go. We're good to go. We'll uh, we'll take care of business on Saturday, and uh, we'll see you guys back for a recap, uh, look ahead spot for uh, Tuesday's games. Yeah, McGinnis will be back on the pod uh, Monday night, looking at the Tuesday card. So uh, thanks for the time, McGinnis. Best of luck, man. I'm riding with you. So hopefully we cash some tickets this weekend. Have a fun, safe weekend, man. You too, Drew. Thanks. Thanks, take care. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please comment, uh, like, if you could share on social media, we would definitely appreciate it. Comment on uh, YouTube and uh, guys, best of luck with your bets. We'll talk on Monday with Teddy Covers opening line report.